required that test completed this requirement. Uh, the pursuant subdivision actually received preliminary approval back in 2006. Uh, it had final approval in 2007 for five lots along the road. Uh, sub uh, subsequent to that time, the uh, developer withdrew from the application. Uh, the one year lapsed uh, from the final approval, so those five lots uh, no longer had approval. So what started out as a 26 lot subdivision became now a 22 lot subdivision. 21 approved residential lots and one remaining lot. Uh, subsequent to that time, the Pursuant family has uh, come back to ask for an amendment to that preliminary approval. Uh, they uh, went ahead and did that. They actually just received last week, uh, on Thursday, uh, conditional preliminary for, for the 28 lot subdivision and conditional final for all those. So they have met the standard that you required of them. Uh, they have conditional final approval. They will have to have final approval by January of next year. Uh, actually, maybe very close to the end of December, actually. Uh, for uh, they, uh, and I've had down here some of the uh, impacts. Uh, certainly the applicant, the impacts of your exemption will be the applicant is exempt from all the new zoning code. Uh, the concern the town board had over water availability in the town, which led to a change in the water testing requirements for all subdivisions, has been exempted. The projects uh, requesting exempt, exempt extensions were all exempted from the water testing protocols except for heritage space. It was part of that where they had to go through the water testing protocols. Uh, the other ones were such that they were under the requirement uh, to have to go into the water testing under our own code. Uh, none of the projects will automatically lose a preliminary pool based on a rejection or uh, an acceptance of, of this exemption. Uh, the town effectively forfeits a large increase in the railroad state taxes if it exempts projects beyond March 1st. March 1st is, 1st is your uh, uh, taxable assessment day. It, it, every, the status of the of all buildings, of all projects, whatever, is assessed on March 1st of each year. Uh, if it's not in, approved by that point in time or whatever, uh, it doesn't happen until the following, following year. So if you exempt projects uh, from uh, going, getting final approval before that, uh, the, the first time they will be taxable as a completed project uh, will be to, uh, September of 2012 for the school tax and January of 2013 for the county and, real, uh, county and local tax. If I can again clarify for the board, the, um, in talking to the assessor, when it goes from farmland to conditional preliminary, she increases the assessment based on the amount of money that's been spent in getting to that level of, of uh, finishing the project. When you get conditional final, it goes up again. So it's not all or nothing. I mean, there's been a, there's been an increase in taxes on this property and also, assessment. But that's just one of the factors she utilizes. That's correct. That there is a valuation in Oh, sure. sure. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. So yeah. But I just want to share with the board how, she been, how they've been doing that. Okay. Uh, and the other thing that happens is that if the applicant doesn't go and get final approval, uh, they stand the risk of if you raise your recreation fee, uh, the cost of the recreation fee goes up. So right now it's at $3,000. If you theoretically raised it by the time 2012 comes around or whatever, they, they get final approval. That's at their cost, and that's just the nature of the beast. Yeah. And on any and L acres, uh, I'd like to leave that up. Uh, it's located on House and Road in 17A. We received conditional final approval on January 17th of 2008. However, subsequently to that, the applicant reapplied for conditional final uh, preliminary approval that was granted conditional preliminary approval on August 20th of 2009 for all 29 months. They received conditional final approval for lots 1 through 20 on August 20th of 2009, thereby leaving nine lots which have not received conditional final approval as required under New York law. And that's just where it stands at this point. And well, Steve, take over, I'm sorry. Well, let, let's deal with this one then. Okay. So when I see this, they had conditional final on all the lots in January 17th of 2008. That's correct. Then they reapplied for conditional preliminary on all 29 lots. Took a step backward. If I read this right. Yeah. Then they received conditional final on 20 lots, leaving nine to be, have not yet received, but they're still, I guess, conditional preliminary. And they still have conditional preliminary, but they do not have conditional final. Okay. So I think we need to have some understanding why that was.
Um, again, I'm just going to run through a little bit of the history of the project. Uh, the owners made application originally in October 2004. Uh, the conservation analysis was filed. Uh, for this portion of the site, uh, you know, as Neil said, its uh, the proposal is 29 residential lots. It's 101.45 acres. It's located in Houston 17A. Uh, the first step uh, in application is really prepare the conservation analysis. Uh, that establishes both the net usable area of the lot, uh, deducting those areas that are developable, wetlands, floodplains, easements, things like that, <coughs> to come up with what's called a base density. In this particular case, the base density that was that was achieved was 37, 36 uh, residential units. We're proposing 29. And regardless of whether this receives an extension of the exemption, 29 won't change. The zoning is essentially the same there. Uh, it's not going to have an impact on the number of units. Uh, so, and that you'll see is, 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 is typical in a lot of the open area developments. Um, what we did is we, we had, um, uh, originally we got conditional final approval. Um, that was going to lapse in August of 2008. We went back and we sent it, or actually 2009, we rescinded our, our approval, repaid fees, came back, got it reapproved the preliminary uh, for a whole host of, you know, reasons, but basically is to be able to economically develop this in a, vi in a, in a, in a viable fashion. Uh, so what we wanted to do is, is phase the project uh, to have Basically, we cut the road in half. We're going to build it. part of the house. Have to understand when you get conditional final approval, you have 100, 360 days to file the matter. The biggest and most complicated from from this side of the table is you have to either build or bond all of the improvements. If you don't have any improvements, then it's no big deal. Uh, so what you know what the Feenies would prefer to do instead of spending tens of thousands of dollars on a, on a bond that doesn't help anybody here in the community. Uh, they would rather take that money and, and invest it in the land. They would rather hire people, buy materials from people, and build a road. Uh, they'll build the road right up to the top coat. You know, then they'll bond the top coat. Uh, our, our project schedule is is that they have a conditional final. They have to file that phase one map by July of, of, of 2010. Uh, we will have completed, they're going to start the road this spring. We'd like to have it completed this spring and summer. And then at some point in time, hopefully, if we're successful in getting the exemption, come back for a conditional final for phase two. And then allow them to build phase two section of the road and take that money that would normally have to be put into bonds or letter of credits, or, you know, and, and use that to build the road and make improvements. Uh, and then ultimately they'd be obligated to file that map within 360 days of receiving conditional final approval for phase two. And basically, I mean, this is a, this is a, this is a traditional way of developing land. I mean, you don't flat out, you know, typically go out and, and try to build the whole thing at once. And in fact, it's, it's inconsistent with really what we did through our approval process. Uh, in A and L acres, we prepared what's called, you know, we did an, we did an environmental fill out an environmental assessment form parts one and two, and we also prepared what's called a part three. Which is we make a book about that thick and look at different things, habitat, traffic, what have you. But it's also construction and construction phasing. Uh, we analyze the site and you know how it will be constructed in phases. Uh, our stormwater prevention pollution plan, SWIP, uh, is also broken down basically into phases where we have to keep construct. You know you don't want to disturb over the state doesn't want us to disturb over five acres of land, uh, and we have to display in that. But we're not going to do that, and if we do it, we're subject to a individual permit, not a general permit. So phasing is a typical, and yet even you know, it's part, was part of our procedure is you know how we would go about and develop this project. And you'll hear this three more for two more times. But basically, okay, how many like conditions were there in the conditional preliminary? <coughs> <coughs> And how many of those have been completed? I believe there's 18, 18 initial uh, conditions. Okay. Uh, off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you how many have been completed. I can't. Okay. Good. How many? Just about all of them. Uh, the only ones that weren't completed are the ones that really pertain to construction. And I'll run through them if you want. No, no, I just want to know. I mean, I just want to know what. I mean, I'm trying to get an idea of what yeah. action has been taken. <laughs>